So first of all, we will start with control plane concept. So the architecture I have mentioned already over here, I included the nodes for the RAN side and core side already. And we will start with this assumption. So let's say one of my friend James, uh, he gets a phone, a smartphone, and then he comes out with his new phone. Insert the SIM card and power on his phone. What will happen? And I will explain you the nodes which will be involved in the control plane first of all. Now remember, before we go further, control plane concept involves those nodes which are involved with the signaling portion or during registration or all those nodes uh, which are responsible in forwarding or giving control signaling information to the UE in one way or the other. That control signaling information could be from the perspective of uh, security, from user registration perspective, from the IP address allocation perspective. It can be with respect to paging information. It can be with respect to broadcast information, system information, etc. So when my friend James powers on his phone, the first thing which will happen is uh, the phone will send a request for connection to the eNode B. As you know, this is the eNode B. So in fact, let me use this uh, dim different symbol for the control plane because in that case it will be easier. So the first thing which will happen over here is when James power on his phone is the request will go from the UE towards the eNode B and after eNode B will receive the request it will process it the user will get registered uh, but user is not completely registered yet because core network does not even know about this user James and LTE is an all IP network each user when it gets registered it needs to have an IP address before it can start requesting any services it's just like when you power on your uh, laptop or computer and then if there is no internet you may not be able to do the stuff which you want to do without internet so in this case in order to get the IP address for the UE and go through the security procedure eNodeB will forward that request towards MME so MME upon receiving this request is going to uh, do security procedure register the user it will verify the identity of the user and if everything seen is sounds good mm will register the user however mm in the registration of the user is complete once it's acquired ip address so mme cannot acquire ip address itself but it does have control to delegate this task of allocating ip address to the specific node and the way mme delegates this task is it orders or forwards this request to sgw HGW will forward this request towards PGW. Now PGW or Packet Data Network Gateway is responsible for IP allocation as we discussed earlier. So this will um, allocate the IP address. So let's write it over here, IP allocation. Okay. So IP allocation uh, is the responsibility for PGW. Once the IP address is retrieved by the, now uh, we mentioned earlier as well that there is a connection between PGW and internet straight away over here. So just wanted to mention it over here in case if you are wondering. Once the IP address is retrieved, the IP address will be given and the IP address will travel back through the same path from PGW to SGW, SGW to MME, MME to E node B and E node B towards the UE finally. Okay, so then in this case, the user James and his phone it will acquire IP address finally. That means the registration is complete. And once the IP address is acquired, then at the end of acquiring IP address, that means the registration has been complete. The user that simply means that the user can start requesting any service. In other words, it can start requesting the user specific services 